today we'll spend our time of communion in Psalm 19. So you can go ahead and turn there. And if you don't have a Bible, there are men with them, and they'd love to put one in your hand. Just raise your hand and they'll bring you one. And if you do not own a Bible, this is yours to keep. Last week, I was on vacation in San Diego. And there was a point on Friday where I was sitting alone on the beach for a little bit. I was sitting out looking at the ocean and was blown away by what God had put together in front of me. The power of the waves, the complexity of the seagulls hunting, the vastness of the grains of sand. And this psalm immediately came to mind. Let's read it together. Psalm 19.1. The heavens are telling of the glory of God, and their expanse is declaring the work of his hands. This single verse makes two significant declarations about God and his creation. Let's look at the first one. The heavens declare the glory of God. Spurgeon says this in his Treasury of David. Any part of creation has more instruction in it than the human mind will ever exhaust. He who would guess at divine grandeur should gaze upward into a star, the starry vault. He who would imagine infinity must peer into the boundless expanse. He who desires to see divine wisdom should consider the balancing of the stars. He who would know divine fidelity must mark the regularity of the planetary motions. And he who would attain some conceptions of divine power, greatness, and majesty must estimate the forces of attraction, the magnitude of the fixed stars, and the brightness of the whole celestial train. It is not merely glory that the heavens declare, but the glory of God. For they deliver such an unanswerable argument for a conscious, intelligent, planning, controlling, presiding creator, that no unprejudiced person can remain unconvinced by them. It is impossible to look at the heavens, or really any part of God's creation, without being blown away by the complexity of it. So why are we not constantly worshiping? For me, I think it's that I don't slow down enough to marvel at God's glory on display. In the midst of a vacation that was designed to slow down, I took 20 minutes and slowed down. The second declaration, and their expanse is declaring the work of his hands. James Montgomery Boyce reminds us, whenever we do investigate the heavens by scientific or other means, we soon find the testimony of nature even stronger than we at first thought. In other words, the existence of a creator is not a superficial but erroneous judgment made by the uneducated, a judgment quickly disproved as soon as one looks at the evidence carefully. On the contrary, the more one looks, the more the heavens gush forth knowledge. That quote is instructive. If we want to expand our worship of God, we must study his creation more or simply look closely and think deeply about what we see. The heavens are loudly screaming of God's glory. Do you listen? And yet this creator, this amazing artist of the heavens, sent his son to die on our behalf. He holds the expanse in his hands. There are no stray stars. There are no stray particles of sand. There are no stray molecules from the Lord's current control. This creator went to the cross so that we could worship him. He took on our punishment so we could clearly see his glory. Boyce went on to say, in Romans, Paul says, for since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been seen clearly, being understood from what has been made so that men are without excuse. This is the meaning of glory in Psalm 19, a revelation of God's existence and power so great that it should lead every human being on the face of the earth to seek God out, to thank him for bringing him or her into existence, and to worship him. So as we prepare our hearts for the Lord's Supper, what can we learn from this today? Christian, I want to speak to you first. Meditate on the glory of God. Meditate on the glory of God displayed in his creation. 
not just this morning during our time of communion, but slow down and meditate throughout the week. As a Christian, God has given you a unique view into himself. Don't ignore it. Bask in it. But there's another group here. There are some who don't see God's creation as a reason to worship their creation. I want to talk to you for a minute. Maybe you're here because you've been a part of a church for a long time and you feel comfortable here. Maybe you're just here because a friend or family member brought you. We're so glad that you're here. And would love to talk to you about how we worship our creator and why. However, during communion this morning, please let the cup and bread pass by. This time of communion is a time of worship reserved for those who put their trust in Jesus. Spurgeon went on to say, The testimony given by the heavens is plain, unmistakable declaration. Yet what is the loudest declaration to a deaf man, or the clearest showing to one spiritually blind? God in the Holy Spirit must illuminate us, or all the sons in the Milky Way never will. If you want to see the created order with new eyes that drive you to worship the creator, please see me or any one of the elders or the person you came with after the service. We'd love to talk to you about our Savior. We're going to take communion on our own today, and then we'll come back up and close our time. And please come and hand out the elements.